Okay, I think we're live. Um, good morning and or good afternoon or good evening to you. And uh, welcome to an introduction to QuickScore and Scoreboard from Spider Strategies. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us here today. Uh, my name is Tom Keating, and I'm, I have the pleasure and privilege of being your presenter here today for today's educational webinar. I am a customer success advocate here at Spider Strategies, and should you want to contact me after today's webinar, you can always feel free to reach me at tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com. Real quickly, just a couple of logistics, important logistic points about today's webinar. We are, of course, using uh, GoToMeeting as our webinar platform. This webinar is being recorded for future use and or reference by yourselves or any of your colleagues if you want to share it with them. Um, all you attendees are presently muted. Um, I always like to just personally apologize for that because I would much prefer that this webinar be a very interactive, live, interpersonal kind of experience. But because we're recording it and because we've learned uh, from our experience that if we leave the microphones open, there's almost always inevitably some kind of background noise which just kind of scuttles the audio one way or another, you know, dogs barking or traffic behind the scenes or a police siren or something coming across. Um, but with that said, uh, either during this presentation, during this webinar, or after the webinar, you can always feel free to reach out to us re regarding your, your questions about education for Spider Strategies, Quick Score, or Scoreboard via our learn at spiderstrategies.com website. Also, within the GoToMeeting session, there is also an area um, for you to provide questions and or um, some chat commentary if you want to. I am going to be personally unable to address those questions live as they come in, but I do have a couple of colleagues from Spider Strategies on the call with us. They hopefully can at least acknowledge them, and if they're able to, they can potentially even answer your questions. So do feel free to take advantage of the questions or chat area within the GoToWebinar um, console that you have there, and we'll do our best to address them either immediately or certainly after the webinar to get back to you with answers to your questions. Um, the, to the topics or the agenda that we are going to be uh, covering today, this is something that I, I hope and trust you're already aware of. You should have received, obviously, an invitation to this webinar. This webinar is very much garnered or directed towards new users of QuickScore and Scoreboard. It's basically we're going to be covering the, the, the basics, the fundamentals. Think of it as, you know, QuickScore or Scoreboard 101. Um, and again, I won't read all of these uh, topic items at you. Uh, I will note that we have scheduled this webinar for two hours, which to me feels like a long time, but then also it's a long time for me to be talking straight on in a monologue. But also, if we're going to address all 10 of these topics, it kind of you just do the math, it really comes down to I've got about 10 minutes per topic. Uh, and this, again, is not a comprehensive coverage of everything that you can do in QuickScore or Scoreboard. But hopefully these are the basics that we feel that new users should be introduced to and get some baseline education on. Again, the other thing that I want to cover here when we're talking about our topics of the day is that while this webinar, I will do my level best to cover all these topics as comprehensively as possible, as I said, as I can in 10 minutes. I also do want you to be aware that we always, 24-7, all the time, have training videos available to you for both QuickScore and for Scoreboard. So if you're a QuickScore customer, I hope you're already aware of this resource, but if you go to balancedscorecards.com forward slash learn, we have a comprehensive library of existing training videos covering anything from introductory type topics to creating scorecard topics, to creating visualizations. So this library of training videos is at your fingertips, as I said, 24-7, all the time, for free, publicly accessible. And the exact same type of library is also available for those of you who may be scoreboard customers. So well, as I said, I'll be doing my level best to educate you today, but I am not the be all and end all of your quick score or scoreboard introductory education. The last thing that I do want to just uh, introduce you to or help you orient, orient you here today is that we're going to be using uh, an existing environment of QuickScore. We're going to be focusing all day today on the, the QuickScore solution. 
Quick score and scoreboard are largely the same. They're based on the same code. They employ the exact same underlying database repository. But today, all of the demonstration and education that I'm going to share with you is going to be done in Quick Score. And we're going to be leveraging an environment that has been created for a mythical uh, telecommunications company called Mobile World Inc. It's a global telecommunications company. Think of it as maybe analogous to, you know, AT&T or something. So a big company with lots of different departments or divisions. And we have um, an example environment that we use for training purposes. We share it with all of our customers when they first um, start up with a, an, an implementation of Quick Score or Scoreboard so that they have it at their fingertips as sort of the, if you will, the art of the possible kind of environment. And that will be the environment that we'll be using today for our demonstration and education purposes. Okay, so with that said, let's just again just go back and just reintroduce you to the topics we're going to be covering. I'll try and hit each of these as sort of separate, if you will, little vignettes. But admittedly, some of them will kind of blend in or bleed into each other uh, just because within the, the ecosystem of, of QuickScore, a lot of things just work hand in hand with each other. Okay, with that said, let's just go ahead and get into a demonstration and an education in QuickScore. I'll start by logging into QuickScore. I'll just, uh, if I can, address up here in the far upper left in the URL uh, up at the top, I'm logging in to a simple aprilwebinar.spiderbsc.com. And of course, I need to provide a username and a password to get myself authenticated into QuickScore. What happens when you log in is two kind of important things. It's subtle and behind the scenes, but it acknowledges who you are and it acknowledges what today is. So I've entered in, I've authenticated and logged into QuickScore and I've landed at the home page of QuickScore. And our first you know, topic on the, on the agenda today is just an orientation or a, an introduction in terms of navigating this home page. I'll do the usual start from the left and just kind of move to the right to just share with you what you have available to you here on the home page. In the black navigation pane, we break that up into three different areas. One is personal, one is presentation, and the third is foundation. Under each of them are different what we call sections. The first section that you're automatically logged into is called home. Again, it's a very personal by nature. The software acknowledges, QuickScore acknowledges, that it is Tom Keating that has logged in and it is sharing with me on the home page things that pertain to me, alerts that pertain to me, responsibilities that are mine, different from anyone else within the organization. I'll come back and just address the, the whole home page a little bit further, but focusing still on the black navigation pane on the left, we also have a bookmark section. This again also is very personal. A bookmarks is basically, it's a library of applications that you build for yourself. You pick and choose what applications or solutions you want to have at your fingertips in your bookmarks library. So we start with a personal approach to who are you and how are you going to want to use QuickScore. Then we have a presentation area. This gives you access to the different sections where you can develop visual applications such as strategy maps, dashboards, charts and reports, and briefings. And then we have a foundation area, which is where we, you, you have access to the creation and, and, and use of score, scorecards, initiatives, and files. Okay, so back to the home page. We'll just again focus on the orientation and navigation of the home page. The next pane to the right is a, a navigation pane allowing you to jump around to different subsections of the home page. Presently, I'm looking at the entire welcome page. It is comprised of a welcome message up here at the top. This is customizable, so all of you at your organizations can provide whatever type of initial welcoming type message you want to provide. You have the option, as we are doing here, to add YouTube videos within this welcome message. It's certainly not required. It is, it's an opportunity. It's a feature that you can take advantage of if you so desire. Then, of course, a little bit further down the page, we have an alerts area. Again, the alerts, again, are very personal. These are alerts that pertain to you. It may be system-generated information, such as informing you that maybe it's time for you to update you know, a measure within the system, or in this case, to alert you that in this case, training revenue has exceeded a threshold that you wanted to be informed of so that you could, let's say, congratulate 
the training department on generating so much revenue. Um, we also, towards the right, have the opportunity for you to view what, are, what we call your responsibilities. In this case, these again are things that pertain specifically to you. So in this case, I, as again, Tom Keating, having logged into QuickScore, have measures that I am responsible for updating. And I can click on measure updates and be brought into an update template, if you will, or form where I can provide actual performance information for the measures that I am responsible for updating. So in this case, through the, Mar the month of March 2020, I've already done my job and provided end of month information. But note that if I move ahead to April of 2020, that being this current month, which is not presently yet finished, so I really can't provide end of month information, the actual values are of course blank. But imagine with me that it is the end of the month and I can provide that information. And for the, you know, our uh, product revenue, measure we did very well in the month of april we exceeded our goal of 465,000, and i put in the 470,000 actual performance in training revenue let's imagine that we didn't quite do so well and we only achieved 250 whoops sorry 250,000 dollars of revenue and for book revenue we did okay we're kind of in the middle and we generated 37,000 dollars worth of book revenue so I've provided actual values for the month of April 2020 as someone who is responsible as an updater of these measures. Before I click in the lower right-hand corner on update measures, I'm going to just take note that you can, um, you can add notes or commentary to these measures as well. So I may say for, the, you know, for product revenue, if I want to add a note that says, we did really well, congratulations, you know, Tom. I can add a note in here, say, way to go, Tom, you know, great job, Oops, great job, something to this effect, right? So that note is now going to be tied for the month of April 2020 to that measure that I have just updated for, again, uh, product revenue. And when I'm done updating those measures, I can click in the lower right-hand corner, click Update Measures, those values will be logged in the underlying database repository, and immediately I see color-coded reflection of the performance, where again, for product revenue, we exceeded our goal of 465,000. For training revenue, we were under our red value or intervention value of 255,000, so it's red. And for book revenue, we kind of did in the middle between our, our red threshold and our goal of 37,000, and we thus have a color of yellow. So that is an example of what you can do for updating. So I'll go back to the home, uh, the home welcome page and just talk about some of the other responsibilities here. Another area is my measures. I may be a business owner of a measure, but not necessarily responsible for updating that measure. So this form gives you a different view of different measures that I, as a business owner, should be responsible for and know about, be able to talk to, uh, talk to and explain to my colleagues here at, at Mobile World. And again, it gives me a nice list of all the measures that I am responsible for. I can filter them to just the measures where we are exceeding our goal or expectations, those that are green. I can focus my attention on those where we are maybe underperforming and we're in the red. And when I'm viewing these measures, you'll notice that all of them are hyperlinked. So they are active links and I can drill into any one of them at my, at my heart's content, to my heart's content. I can drill into book production costs and investigate the historical performance. And I see here, obviously, a very troubling trend uh, with regard to book production costs is that we are getting, you know, we, we started with 14K. Actually, I guess the cost is the less we spend is good. So we're actually getting better. But it is still here. It's still in the red. And I can view that measure in a couple ways. I can view it graphically. I can take a look at that exact same book production cost in more of a tabular format where I see the same measure, the same information that I was seeing graphically, but I see it in a, in a tabular type of presentation. And then when I'm done investigating this book production cost, I can, uh, at my whim, navigate to take a look at different measures that are here within the scorecard and the underlying system and investigate or evaluate them. And when I'm done with that ad hoc investigation of the details, I again can navigate back to the home page of QuickScore and, and restart my, my process of addressing 
my responsibilities. Uh, we also, under your responsibilities area, have a, a section called My Tasks. These tasks are associated with what we call initiatives. Um, initiatives is something that we're not going to be covering on today's webinar, but we will be covering on uh, a subsequent webinar. I, I believe we've got eight or ten of these webinars li lined up, and initiatives is something that we will address in, in a later webinar. But these are very much like the, the updating of measures. These are tasks that I have that I'm responsible for that tie to initiatives within QuickScore. So the home page of QuickScore, again, um, provides you with a very personal experience um, in terms of alerts and responsibilities and information that can be provided to you by the, the underlying QuickScore system administrator. Again, very personal in nature. And that wraps up our first topic of just navigating the home screen. The next thing then that we want to do is get into really the guts of the QuickScore solution, which is scorecards. So I'm going to navigate in the far left black navigation pane under the foundation area. We're going to go into scorecards. And the goal here for this particular section of this webinar is to create, show you how to create a scorecard. And we're actually going to start by initially creating what we call an organization. An organization is, is it can be a company, it can be a department, it can be a division, it can even be personal. You can create as many different organizations as you like. And you see here that for our, our mythical company of Mobile World Inc., I alluded to the fact that it's a big, you know, global telecommunications company. So they have created for themselves a scorecard that follows the classic um, Kaplan and Norton balance scorecard methodology. So the Mobile World Balance Scorecard is comprised of perspectives of financial customer, internal processes, and organizational capacity. Under those perspectives, this scorecard is set up with objectives. Objectives are action-oriented, sort of verb-based uh, initiatives here to increase revenue, improve profitability, reduce sales overhead costs. And under those uh, objectives, we have the measures. So this is a classic example of a, of a balanced scorecard approach to setting up a scorecard within uh, QuickScore. Now that works great at the Mobile World Inc. highest corporate level, but at Mobile World, we talked about there being different departments like finance and sales and information technology. Those different departments may not necessarily follow the exact same structure for their scorecard. So in the, in the world of finance, in the financial department, if we look at their scorecard, you'll see that the financial department scorecard is structured a little bit differently than the corporate level Mobile World Inc. scorecard was. So in this case, what the people in the finance department have done is they've set themselves up with a scorecard that really follows kind of just a, a profit and loss type paradigm, a PNL. So we've got a theme here of revenue. And under revenue, we again are tracking product revenue, training revenue, book revenue. Okay, so those are, are set up, again, in, with the mentality, whoops, if you will, of, you know, the finance department and how they think about how they're managing the financial side of the business, okay? If we look at another organization here, another department within the Mobile World Inc. Corporation, we've got our friends in information technology. They similarly have a scorecard, and their scorecard is very simple in nature. It is comprised purely just of measures that they are tracking on a month-to-month -month basis. They are evaluating their own performance against IT effectiveness, IT availability, network availability, and so forth. So my point in sharing all of these different types of scorecards with you is to share with you the fact that it, it's extremely flexible what you do in, in QuickScore. You are not locked into any particular methodology or forced you know, template or structure for your scorecard. What we're going to do here for training purposes today is I'm going to create a new organization, a new scorecard, and just build, we'll start building the basics of something like what I shared with you here in Mobile World, where I will build a scorecard that is structured by, again, the classic, you know, balanced scorecarding methodology with perspectives and objectives and underlying measures. So to get started with that, I first of all have to create for myself a brand new organization. 
To do so, I'll click on the far upper left corner where there's a briefcase for Mobile World Inc. giving me a drop down navigation menu of all of the existing organizations that presently exist under Mobile World. I'll go into edit mode in the lower right corner of this black navigation pane. I'll click edit and I'm going to use this pop-up menu here to create a new organization. And in this case, what we'll call this organization is we'll just keep it simple and we'll call it training 2020. And I will add that organization. So note over on the left here, Training 2020 now exists as a brand new organization. I'm going to reposition it up to the top using simple drag and drop. I'll put it here at the top just so it's more quickly and easily accessible later on. So this Training 2020, note that it is an empty circle. What that indicates to you is that presently there is no scorecard within that organization. It's effectively an empty shell of an organization or a department or a division. And, but I have created it. So now I'm done with edit mode. I'll click done in the lower right hand corner of the black navigation pane. And I see that I can now select training 2020 as an empty organization, use the blue select button to select it. And I'll open up the training 2020 organization or, you know, the, the, the icon that we give you up here is a briefcase. So it's effectively right now, it's an empty briefcase that doesn't really have anything in it. Thus, my next step is to create a scorecard. So I'll click Create Scorecard to create a scorecard. And again, for you know, education purposes, again, I will give this the exact same name of Training 2020 Scorecard. I can provide a description if I like. I can also add some tags to make this easily searchable and something I can find quickly and easily later. I won't take the time to do so right now. And instead, I'll just click Create. So now I have an empty scorecard. Note that the software immediately expects that I'm going to build this scorecard up. So it says, well, you should build this up and we're going to presume that you're going to start with a new perspective. And again, this is following, again, classic, you know, balanced scorecarding type methodology where the scorecard is going to go perspectives, objectives, and measures. And I am going to follow that paradigm here just for education purposes today. So in this case, I will set up a perspective called financial. Now leverage here that I had typed that in earlier. Note please that over to the right, as much as QuickScore assumes that I am creating a perspective, I don't necessarily have to set this up as a perspective. I can create instead objectives or a theme, or I can jump straight to creating a measure, or I can leverage or link to another measure that lives somewhere else in another scorecard somewhere. So I've got plenty of different choices in terms of what I'm creating here at this level of the scorecard creation process. And then at this point, I'll either just hit enter or click the create button in the lower right hand corner to create that financial perspective. Again, just for education or example sake here, I'll create another perspective called customer. Again, click create in the lower right corner. So you get the sense that it's very quick and easy to create different perspectives. You can create as many as you want. You can follow the classic, again, Kaplan and Norton balance, balance scorecard methodology, or you can create whatever works for you. Once I've created a couple of perspectives, I then want to add some objectives underneath one of the perspectives. So in financial, I'd like to create a new scorecard item. Thus, at the top, I'll highlight financial, and at the top, I'll click new scorecard item and I will create an objective to increase revenue. Again, on the type dropdown in the upper right, I do have, again, the capability of defining something other than an objective, if that's what's appropriate. But for now, an objective is what I want. So I'll create increase revenue as an objective and move on to create another objective to reduce costs. Reduce costs. Sorry, I'm not such a good typist. Reduce costs, and again, it's an objective, and I'll click Create. So that's how easy it is to create objectives. Then under the objectives, I want to have measures. Measures are really the foundation of a scorecard. I like to analogize them to like the bricks of the foundation of a house. They're all important because it's the, it's the measures that are tracked and scored that in turn roll up to objectives and in turn in, in, in kind roll up to perspectives. So under increased revenue, I want to create a measure. So again, I'll click new scorecard item. 
and it acknowledges that what I have selected was an objective and quick score is smart enough to say, well, if you were on an objective and you're creating something new, you're probably going to create a, a measure. So I am in fact creating a measure in this case called product revenue. Again, towards the upper right, I again have the opportunity to change what it is I'm creating, but measure is appropriate at this point in time. If I'd like, I can provide any kind of a helpful description. I won't bother to actually type in a description here, but you can type whatever you want here in terms of explaining what this measure is, why it matters, maybe who owns it and so forth. And then if I scroll down, we get into the, the all important details or properties or attributes of this measure. And so you can see here that there are plenty of different attributes at my fingertips that I wanna set for this particular measure. The first is a scoring type. And scoring type is, is very important, and this is where I'm gonna kind of jump onto a, a little bit of a tangent here to address one of our other topics for today's agenda, which is all about scoring. You'll note here, I'll show it to you here, and then I'll talk about it a little more in a minute. We have 11 different scoring types available to you within Quick Score and Scoreboard. The most commonly used scoring type is goal and red flag. And so it is set by default as the presumed scoring type. But of course, you can pick any of these other different scoring types. So I'm going to pause here in the creation of this measure to jump to a different, you know, if you will, academic discussion about scoring in Quick Score. Because it's very important that anyone that's new to Quick Score or Scoreboard understand how and why scoring occurs within our software solution. So measures, as I said, and their associated zero to 10 normalized scores are really the foundation of how performance is tracked and, and in turn visually presented in, in Quick Score. Our Quick Score and or Scoreboard performance management solutions assign normalized scores of zero to 10 and then a color associated with that score to your actual you know, performance values or measures according to the scoring type and the threshold that you have assigned to any given measure. Very common question, why do we use this normalized scoring approach within Quick Score and Scoreboard? And the answer is that for you to really evaluate your overall corporate enterprise-wide performance across myriad different measures, you really need a common scoring system that can allows you to equitably compare on the same, if you will, playing field, apples to oranges and maybe even your business bananas. So let me just explain that a little further here to just expand on the why normalized scoring matters and how it's helpful. At Mobile World, we track sales revenue, we track customer churn, we track profit percentage. They are all distinctly different types of values that we are tracking. Revenue is, of course, monetary, U.S. dollar based. Customer churn is, you know, quantity of customers. Profit percentage is obviously a percentage-based calculated type of measure. They all matter. They're all distinctly different, though. Dollars don't often really easily equate to number of customers that doesn't easily equate to, you know, a profit percentage percent value. But if you allow our software to translate your actual performance against your defined thresholds for each and every separate measure, we can come up with a normalized score for each of them. And then we can bring those normalized scores together to get a general sense of our overall enterprise performance across all three of those very distinct measures that we're tracking within Quick Score. So that's how and why normalized scoring is very important within Quick Score and, and Scoreboard. So Setting up normalized scoring is something that you do when you're building a measure. And that's why I paused in the measure creation process to jump into this presentation here. Um, there's a sense of you know what's bad, you know what's good, and you know what's medium kind of performance for any particular measure. Again, it could be dollar-based, customer units, whatever, profit percentage. So if you know that, you can, you can set up any particular measure appropriately within Quick Score. So for sales revenue, you know, if we are at or below $100,000 in revenue for a given, let's say, month, that's bad. If we're at $425,000, that's, that's okay. And if we get up to $750,000 or more, that's, that's really good. And we want to acknowledge that. So again, by setting up each and every measure appropriately with the appropriate scoring type and thresholds, we can translate performance into normalized scores of zero, five, or, you know, 10, or anywhere along the way. 
So customer churn is another example where actually a low number is good. So notice here that on the left, we've got you know, zero customers lost is exceptionally good, and that should get a normalized score of 10 and be colored green. Whereas on the right, if we lose 80 customers, that's terrible, and we should get a normalized score of zero. And then warehouse inventory is another example where what we're looking for is really a sweet spot number. We don't want too few widgets on the shelves so that we may not be able to fulfill you know, customer demand, but we also don't want too many widgets on our warehouse shelves just unnecessarily taking up space. So you could have a, 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 set, a setup like this where on the outside, either 200 is way too few, 600 is way too many, those both get a normalized score of zero, and the sweet spot number of 400 on the shelves is perfect, and it gets a normalized score of 10. So hopefully through that, you get a sense that you've got a lot of control and choice in terms of how you set up scoring for any particular measure. And again, each of them get, get scored, and then they in turn get colored. So if you use the goal and red flag paradigm or, or scoring type, which again is by far the most commonly used, what Quick score will do for you is take your zero to 10 normalized score spectrum and just divide it equally into thirds so that the scores have threshold um, dividers at the score of 3.33 and 6.67. You also could do something simple like just saying, I don't even need yellow in this. I either want red or green. And you can set it up that way. You could have goal only or yes, no uh, kind of binary type analysis. Did we meet our goal or not? Did we host a meeting as scheduled or not? And so if you didn't, you get a zero. If you did, you get a 10. Zero is red, 10 is green, of course. And then you could break it up even more uh, into like four color scoring if red, yellow, green isn't enough and you want kind of a, a middle score of, of 2.5 to five, which is orange. And again, another example of that, that warehouse type um, scoring type where in the middle is the sweet spot. The outliers should be scored um, lower and get a color of red. And again, we offer you out of the box 11 different scoring types. So for any particular measure, when you're setting up a measure, you, you should know what type of scoring you're gonna to apply to any measure. So that brings the scoring type discussion to an end and let's get back into actually creating this product revenue measure. So again, I've got my choice of those 11 different scoring types. I am just gonna go ahead and leave it at goal and red flag. Moving on, I need to address how often this measure should expect to be updated. So in this case, I've got some calendar choices. These are what we provide you by default out of the box. They're Gregorian calendars. But please be aware that you can, of course, set up for yourself your own custom calendars. Maybe it's a fiscal calendar. Maybe if you're in, in the world of education, you've got semester-based calendars. You can create your own custom calendars, and they will become available to you here in this drop-down list so that you can leverage those calendars and apply a sense of update periodicity to any particular measure. The data type over here on the right, again, it's either a numeric thing, it's a percentage thing, or it's a money or currency-based measure. And you need to pick the appropriate data type here, in this case, because this is, you know, it's a revenue, it's product revenue, I'll set it as a currency. The aggregation type is important because this comes into play when you roll this measure up into different time periods. So in this case, I am setting product revenue up to be updated monthly, but within QuickScore, I may choose to view product revenue at a quarterly basis or even an annual basis. When I change that periodicity, this aggregation type will tell the solution, will tell QuickScore how it should bring all of the different month values together and roll them up or aggregate them into a quarter presentation or an annual presentation. And so your choices here are some average geometric mean, or if you've already provided a summarized value as you move forward in time, then it, then it won't aggregate January and February and March when you look at you know, the quarter one. It'll just grab the March value because you've already provided the quarter total when you put in that March number. Okay, Decimal preci precision is very straightforward. And if you've selected currency as the data type, then you'll have a field here where you can select a, a, a particular currency. In this demo world, we only have three of the global currencies here available, but uh, we've got probably 100 different worldwide currencies that you can turn on and take advantage of. Moving down then, 
Again, we talked about the scoring and the need for thresholds. So this is going to be a goal and red flag scoring type measure. And what I want to do here is set up the red flag value for this. So this, again, red flag can maybe equate to like an intervention value. This, again, is the threshold where the score will, if it's less than, in this case, 300,000, it will become red. The goal is the value that I aspire to hit. And if I, ex if I meet or exceed, in this case, 350,000, then that measure will become green and will get a score higher than 6.67 up to a potential of 10. Lastly, when creating a measure, we want to assign any owners or updaters. Again, an owner is someone that is responsible for this measure in terms of a business, if you will, understanding of, of what that measure is. Uh, they can explain why it's being tracked, what it impacts, or what it is impacted by, and so forth. So they may not be an updater, but they are the business owner of it. They're presumably going to want to view and follow and track this measure through QuickScore. The updater, on the other hand, and I'll set up the same person, which is, which is me here, as the updater. The updater is someone who is responsible for updating this measure. As I said earlier, I set this up on a monthly basis. So month over month, someone is going to be updating this measure. Who's responsible for that? And I can add, you know, I can add more than one person if I like. And I can say not only would, you know, Teak be doing it, but also let's make the updaters also uh, some, somebody that is able to access this measure and potentially update it. So I just created one example of a measure. And I know that took a little while because we had to talk about all the gory details and we jumped out into the discussion of scoring. But that is the creation of, of one simple measure. And at this point in the lower right hand corner, I click create and the measure of product revenue now exists. And then it forges ahead and assumes that what I want to do now is create, you know, another uh, measure of, you know, let's say training, you know, revenue. And I can forge ahead and create another measure with all the same types of properties. Of course, I would be setting in this case, you know, maybe different um, thresholds. So for training revenue, maybe we only expect 100,000 as our red flag. And the goal here in this case is we hope to get 150,000 for training revenue. And I won't bother to create an owner and updater. The other thing just to be aware of is that you can also copy and paste um, measures. So if, if I have product revenue available here and I want to create another instance of a revenue number, instead of creating it from scratch, I can go down here at the bottom and I can copy, uh, you know, I can copy product revenue and generate a new measure in that same area of the scorecard and then just go in and tweak some of the fundamental properties of it. So in this case, I want to put this new measure in the increased revenue um, objective and I'll go ahead and copy it there. So now it exists here as a, another example of product revenue. And I can go up here and very quickly and easily just change its name, you know, to be uh, book revenue. And again, I can go down and adjust the threshold to make it appropriate. So in book revenue, we really only expect, you know, 50,000 as our intervention or red, uh, red flag value. And we hope to sell, let's say, 75,000 worth of books. So there's a couple different approaches to creating measures. You can do it manually from scratch. You can copy existing ones and then just rename them. So that, folks, in a nutshell, is the scorecard um, creation, creation process. Again, at this point, I really wish that this was live, and I could ask if you have any questions, but I don't really have that opportunity to do so. So that is, again, a quick introduction. Again, everything that I've done so far is, again, available to you. I'll click Done here to get out of the edit mode and just evaluate and reflect on the scorecard that I've created to this point. And again, just due to the Latin of the shortness of time, I do need to move on. Again, let me reiterate that, you know, this process about, you know, creating a scorecard is available. The training here is available to you up here in terms of a, a training video about creating a scorecard, you know, from scratch. So again, if, if I didn't do it justice here today, please be aware that that training video is, as I said, at, at your fingertips. Okay. Um, just taking a quick look again at, at our agenda. Let's just pause here and just reorient ourselves. So what we've done, we've looked at the home screen, we've created a scorecard, we've created some measures, we've addressed scoring. Uh, adding the comments. I actually showed you an example of adding comments, but I'll just revisit that topic here uh, briefly. You know, where I showed you how you can add comments, if you recall, was when I was back 
on, on the home page. So I'll, I'll be leaving my training 2020 environment. And you'll recall that, that back on the, on the home page, when I showed you the, you know, the measures that I'm responsible for updating, I showed you how I was able to update measures, um, you know, for March, or sorry, April I did, April of 2020. And while I was updating that measure, I also added a note. So that's notes slash commentary, you know, different words for the same general idea. So that note again was added to, to product revenue and it exists for the month of April, 2020. Anyone can come along and review that note at any point in time. They also can adjust or if you will, reply to that note. So I may say, you know, yay, way to go. You know, something like that, right? So I can reply to that note at any point in time. So this commentary or these notes are, they're really ubiquitous. They exist from where I'm showing you here from, again, the home page, and when you're updating measures, you have access to those. They also are tied to that, to that measure at all the different points where the measure is stored and visible throughout QuickScore. So if I jump into product revenue as a measure, I can see down here at the bottom that there is a notes pane. Now, I'm not presently showing that notes pane purely because it just I want the resolution of the screen to be bigger. But note that if I make my resolution a little bit smaller, the notes pane, if I give it the, if you will, screen real estate to be presented, I do see notes permanently along the bottom, and so I can, I can view them at any point in time. Now, that note is tied to this particular measure. If I jump to a different measure of training revenue, you'll see that training revenue is, of course, a measure. It's got historical information. It's got updated you know, performance values and so forth. It doesn't have any notes. So maybe I want to add a note here to training revenue. In the same way that I was able to access the notes or the commentary from the update um, screen or the, 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 when I was updating the value, I can get to that same notes interface here. And also, while I'm doing this, I also just want you to know that you can also create notes that are permanent across all time periods. You can associate a note with just a single month, maybe just one particular quarter, maybe just for the whole year, or you want to say, I want a note that will be ever present uh, tied to this training revenue measure, no matter what time period someone is looking at. So we'll just put in a note here that is all time, you know, periods, note. Sorry, guys, bad, bad typing. Um, all time period note. Okay. And I'll set this up again as an all time note. I'll confirm that it's an all time note and I add that note. So this note will be there no matter what time period I'm looking at. So if I navigate away from April back to March, see the note is still at the bottom. If I go to February, the note is still there. And that differs from the product revenue note that I created, where if I'm in February of 2020, and I, there is no note. If I go to March, there's no note. If I go to April, now there's a note, because that note is tied just to that one single month. So notes are, again, are ubiquitous. They're available to you in a couple different avenues. You can work with them directly from this uh, scorecard view. You can work with them and, and create them from the update view that we saw. And that same update view is also available to you here. If I just, I'll just go back into March of 2020. If I wanted to update this measure from the scorecard perspective, note that this looks very much like what we saw from the home page in terms of updating the measure. And maybe in this case, you know, we, we, we got it wrong for March of 2020, and we actually didn't do 445,000. We actually did 447,000. And I want to update that measure in here. And in so doing, I want to add, again, a note and say, well, here's a note that says, you know, sorry, got a measure wrong last time, all right? But and is now correct or something, right? And then I can add that note for just the month of March 2020. So that met the, again, the notes are available to you. The commentary is available to you from a lot of different avenues. It's just a question of you know finding the one that feels most appropriate and, and is available to you most easily and conveniently. So that's adding comments throughout the solution. Um, again, just to real quickly orient what we have next here, um, creating charts. So let's get into, now what we're moving towards, guys, here, as you can see here, our, our agenda items of, of six through 10 are very much focused on the visual presentation of your scorecard. 
So to this point, we've kind of laid the, the basics or the, the groundwork of how to create a scorecard. I've shown you an example of the mobile world scorecard, which is you know, very robust in nature. And I'll be using that mobile world scorecard to show you how to create things like charts and reports and dashboards and what we call briefings, which are you know, presentation decks. So that's what we have here ahead of us. I'll go ahead and jump back into the software. And so we'll show you how to create um, some charts here or graphs within QuickScore. Um, to do so, I'm gonna jump back to the Mobile World Inc. organization, mostly because it just has a nice, you know, robust scorecard that I can leverage in creating um, a chart. The section of QuickScore that we're gonna leverage here is called Charts and Reports. It's over here on the left in black, hovering my hand over it right now. I'll go into the Charts and Reports section of QuickScore, and you see that I have some existing reports, just a couple simple examples of some reports. We've got a red measures report that I'll show you how we can create when I, when I create a report for you. This is a great report because it shows you where you are underperforming and allows you to drill in and investigate and hopefully correct the underperformance. Uh, we also have another downward trending measures report that's available here. We also have a scorecard structure report allowing you to view the nature of your scorecard in a report kind of tabular format. Uh, but our goal here is to create a new chart. So you start by clicking new report at the top of the black navigation pane within the charts and reports section of QuickScore. So I'll click new report. Out of the box, we give you some pre-formatted tabular reports that are here listed on the left. We'll, I'll get into some of those here in just a minute. But for now, what we're doing in terms of creating a chart is we're gonna go over to the right and select chart writer. So I'll select chart writer and then click next. And you'll see that what it's done here is it has opened what's really just a two-step wizard. Notice that at the very bottom, there's a, blue, a check in a blue circle saying, well, you already took care of step one, which is to say, what are you creating? And then now I use the edit chart interface, which is effectively step two of the wizard process to define what type of chart and what data I want to view on the chart. So my goal here is to create a chart that compares training revenue, product revenue, and book revenue, and the scores of those three different measures all on, on one chart. And I want to reflect in this chart, I, I want to see six months worth of performance data. So I'm going to go back five periods. So I'm going to say, please, on this chart, show me five previous months and then also the current month. So I'm defining the time range first. Then I need to add series or tell it what data I want shown on this chart. So I'll click Add Series, and I'll navigate out to find the scorecard items that I want to present on this chart. And in this case, I will leave it as a line graph, and I'm going to be reflecting uh, the measures, their, their normalized scores. So I'll go into <clears throat> the fi I'll just do it here in Financial. I'll go to Increase Revenue and I wanna bring product revenue onto the graph. Now, please take note in the lower left-hand corner, what the software presumes is what I'm gonna show on this graph via a line for product revenue is the actual value, the, the real amounts of money you know, that we made in product revenue month over month. But in my case, because I know that product training revenue, training revenue, and book revenue are on vastly different revenue scales, and I want to be able to really kind of equitably compare them against each other, I'm actually going to leverage their normalized score to give me the values for the line on this graph. So I'll click score for product revenue and I'll click done. So there what I've done is I've, even at this point, if I just stopped, I would end up with a graph that is as simple as can be. It's a line graph showing me my score performance for product revenue. Okay, and that's great, it's a good start, but again, I, what I'd like to also show on this graph is training revenue and book revenue. So I'll click the edit button in the lower left, and I don't wanna save any changes I made, and I'm gonna expand what I'm showing here on this graph. So I'll add another series or another data point to the graph. So again, it opens up the same choose item interface, and in this case, again, I'm still gonna leverage some revenue information. In this case, I'll pick training revenue. 
Again, in the lower left corner, I want to reflect its normalized score, not its actual dollar performance. I want to see its score. And I'll click Done. So now I've got two different series here on this graph. And then I'll add one more, which again is our book revenue. And I'll click Done. Oops, sorry, I forgot to change it to score. I want to again bring in the score and I'll click Done. So now, folks, I've got a graph that has three different lines. One is purple, one is kind of an aqua blue, and one is a darker, you know, blue. And those three lines represent three different measures. Now, for each of them, I can uniquely set them up to be lines, or I could change if I wanted one of them to be a bar or an area or what have you. I can adjust how each of those measures are uniquely presented. So you can create kind of the idea of a combination graph through uh, QuickScore. In this case, I will go ahead and just leave them all as lines, and then I'll click Save. Okay? And then I'll give this a name, all right, of, you know, Training 2020. Sorry, again, there's my typing 2020, you know, graph. All right? And then I'll click Save again, and I'll get out of edit mode by clicking Done. At the bottom of the black navigation pane, I'll click Done. And there is my end result of a graph showing me book revenue, training revenue, and product revenue compared to each other, again, presenting their normalized scores. And again, I'll reiterate, the reason I went after the scores is, again, that product revenue is in the hundreds of thousands, whereas book revenue is in more in the tens of thousands, and they wouldn't really look good together on the same graph they're so they're so disparate from each other so using the scores brings them again onto that same kind of playing field allowing me to evaluate our performance based on the normalized scores that we're associating with those different measures so that's one simple example again of how you can create a graph within quick score um, and again the, the different types i showed you that there are different types of graphs i could come in here i could i could adjust as i said the type of presentation i could make it bars i could make it lines i can do whatever i want there in terms of how they look again we provide you with a table of information down below giving you immediate summary access to those measures and should i want to investigate any of those measures individually outside of this nice chart i can sim simply click on any one of them i can click training revenue Again, it drills me down into the scorecard and shows me that specific individual measure, again, allowing me the detail type analysis and investigation that I might want to perform on training revenue or product revenue or any of the other measures that exist within the underlying scorecard. Okay. All right, so that's how you create a chart within QuickScore. Uh, let's get back to the creation of applications. In this case, we'll talk about creating some a couple of different reports. Um, again, I reflected with you here that we've got this nice report called Red Measures. It, it's very simple in nature, but again, it's very helpful because, again, it gives me a view uh, of where we are underperforming. This re report is only pulling in information from the month of March 2020 where we have de been determined to be underperforming and thus have you know, a red color associated with a poor score. And again, at this point from this report, just like from the graphs, if I wanted to investigate, let's say product costs, I can simply click on it and drill down in to product costs. And again, as you've seen now a couple of times, get into the scorecard and again, do some kind of analysis or evaluation of our performance on product costs. And when I'm done with that, I can just navigate back to the report. So how do you create a report like this or another, you know, report? So I'll create another new report. So this, the creation process starts just like it did when I created a chart or a graph by clicking New Report at the top of the navigation pane. In this case, I am going to take advantage of one of our out-of-the-box report templates. We provide you here with eight different out-of-the-box templates, actually nine to tell you the truth because there's initiatives report over here in the upper right. So we do provide you with different templates that make the report creation process really quite simple. So if I want an example of a red measures report, I click on red measures report, click next, and you'll note again at the bottom that I'm stepping through a little, in this case, a three-step wizard, okay? And what I wanna do is say, well, what part of my scorecard do I want to pull red measure information from? So in this case, just so that I have a chance of getting a, a lot of data out of this report, I am going to leave it at the full 
Mobile World Inc. organization on the left and the entire Mobile World Balance Scorecard on the right. But of course, you can dial this in and focus your attention on just specific areas of your scorecard to, to whatever extent you want. I, again, am, am doing this just with the spirit of hopefully getting enough data that the report is actually po populated with data when I finish. So I am going to pull in the entirety of the Mobile World Balance Scorecard in this case. And so then I'll click in the lower right-hand corner. I'll click Next to move to the, the really the last step of the process, which is to say, well, you know, what data, what columns do you want to view on your report that's down here at the bottom? You know, maybe I would also like to see, in addition to the, the name of the measure that might pop up in, in this red measures report, I'd also like to see its system-generated ID. And maybe I'd like to know who are the updaters for any given measure that appears in the report. So I can add or, or remove columns, if you will, within the report. And then I do need to define what time period I'd like to see. So in my case, I'd like to look back a little bit in time. I'd like to go back, let's say, you know, two months. So I'm going to go two periods earlier and reflect where have we had any underperformance over the last effectively three months. And I'll click Finish. and wait for the report to be generated. Apparently, we don't have any data from March. Okay, so I generated a report, which unfortunately ended up with no data. Apparently, we are not underperforming anywhere in that time period. I must have messed that up somehow. Sorry, folks, let's do a quick edit here. Um, I'm not gonna save the changes, but I am gonna edit it. I wonder where I messed that one up. Two periods earlier to the current period. Interesting, that's what I thought I wanted. Okay, well, anyway, so that's an example of how to create a report, in this case, it didn't generate any data. That is, that's fascinating. Maybe if I expand the time period here, let's go back, you know, six periods earlier. And again, click finish. Let me just reflect what I've got here. I've got everything red, do to do, a scorecard item. Yep, any of the measures and click save. If I can fix this up here and then say done. No, I did it again. Ended up with a report that generated no data. Sorry, folks. I know I practiced this earlier. I'm not quite sure why I'm getting nothing. Um, anyway, that's how you can create a report. That's the, the process to create a report. So let's see if we can create another one from scratch that will actually generate for us uh, some data. I wonder if I forgot to include descendants or something. Let me do one more quick edit on this, see if I can find the problem here. No, it should be giving me everything. Fascinating. Let's see if I, yeah. All right, folks, don't know. Um, not quite sure why that's not giving me any data. All right, let's move ahead um, in the spirit of just time and just picking up and moving on. I'm going to create another new report here. And this one I'm going to create from scratch. Um, in the last case, I leveraged an existing template of the red measures report. In this case, I'm going to create a report from scratch. I'm not going to leverage an existing, like I said, pre-defined, pre pre-formatted report template. So I'm going to create a new report. And in creating a new report, notice that at the bottom, again, it's a three-step process. And we basically define what columns we want, what time periods we want to include, and what rows of data we want in this report. So I'll start by picking the columns that I'd like to see in my uh, resulting reports. What I like is, of course, the name. Again, I may like to see the system ID for anything. Um, maybe it's helpful to know the measure frequency, you know, how often any given measure is expected to be updated. And maybe even it's helpful to know its scoring type. And then I'll say, well, what do I want to see about any of these measures? I'd like to see the normalized score colors. I'd like to see the normalized score itself. I'd like to see the actual value, and maybe I'd like to see the goal and the variance to goal for any measure that appears in the resulting report. So again, it's my choice as to what columns I'd like to see in the resulting output. I'll move to the next step of the process here. Again, this is where you define, if you will, the calendar periodicity that you want to reflect in your report. Again, I'd like to go back in time here several months so that my report gives me, you know, the past, let's say, six months worth of information. So I'll go five periods earlier and include them through the current period that I'm reflecting in my calendar time period selector. And I'll click next. And then here in the last step of the process is to define, you know, which areas of your scorecard or scorecard you want to pull the data from. 
So there's a, a variety of different ways to attack this adding a row filter step. You can select, you know, you can start filtering on what type data types, what descriptions you're looking for, what maybe you only want things that have a certain measure frequency. You only, let's say, want measures that are populated every month or what have you. The most common approach here is to select specific scorecard items. So I'll click on specific scorecard items and say next. And then like you saw earlier, now I need to dial into which parts of my existing scorecards I want to pull into this report. And this again is like effectively defining what rows of information should be included in the report. So in my case, again, in the spirit of getting data, which hopefully will actually get data in this report this time, I want to bring in the whole mobile world balance scorecard. I want everything in it. So I'm gonna click add. Again, up here towards the upper right, I do want to include all the descendants of that mobile world balance scorecard. So effectively I'm saying, bring in anything from financial and from customer and internal processes into this report. So I've defined the three required components here of columns and date range and what rows of information I want in the report. And then I can click get report and it will generate a report for me which this time it better give me data, and sure enough, it does. Still don't know why that other one didn't work. Um, so here is my resulting report. So what I'm seeing here is, of course, all of the different components of my entire scorecard, anything from the highest scorecard level of mobile world balance scorecard to the financial perspective to the increased revenue objective, and then down into the nitty-gritty measures. And of course, Based on what type of element it is, you know, not all of the cells of this report are going to be populated because increased revenue, it only has a score. It doesn't have a goal. It doesn't have an actual measure that is being evaluated and, and presented in the report. But all of the measures, of course, are giving me the actual performance value, you know, what the goal was, the variance to the goal, and the normalized score for each and every time period that I asked to be in the support. So I've got six months worth of information going from September of 19 back in this case to April of 2019. And again, this report remains dynamic and tied in the, to the upper right, I've got my calendar period selector. So I could adjust the time period that I'm viewing and I can move ahead to let's say that I'd like to actually evaluate, you know, six months through December of 2019. So now note that the report, the same report, same format, but it's now showing me information from July through December of 2019. And again, when I'm done with this report, I can go ahead and save it and we'll just call it, you know, uh, all scorecard report and click save. So that in a nutshell is how you create a couple different types of reports. Again, just to review, uh, you start by going to the new report button. Again, we showed you how you can select chart writer to create a chart. You can use report writer to create a custom report that you've built ad hoc from scratch. And or you can take advantage of the different existing report templates that are here sort of out of the box and at your fingertips just to make that report creation process a little bit simpler, a little bit easier for you. Okay. Again, let's just take, let me take a breath here. I actually, I need a sip of water. And then let's move ahead and address our, our next agenda topic. Okay, so we're up to step eight or topic number eight here, um, which is creating a dashboard. We've created charts, we've created reports, and let's show you how you can bring together, together different types of visual applications together all on one cohesive dashboard. So to do that, <clears throat> First, let's just start, start by showing you a couple of exi existing examples of dashboards, just to kind of give you a sense of, if you will, we'll call it, you know, the, the art of the possible. These are not, you know, by any means comprehensive to the types of, of dashboards you can create, but there's some really, you know, nice, nice examples. We've got a sales versus expense dashboard, giving us quick and easy visibility to revenue where we're making our money. We've got visibility to the cost, you know, where we're spending our money. And then we've got nice little uh, speedometer gauges giving us access to different operating expense areas. Again, a dashboard is great because it's visually enticing. It provides immediate actionable insight, color-coded, of course, red, yellow, green, to give you easy understanding of performance, and it's live. So if I wanted to investigate 
you know, the operating expense around travel, I can click on the travel speedometer. And as we've done it through a myriad different avenues, I can drill down into the scorecard and again, do my own ad hoc analysis of travel. Again, I can view it over time, performance over time. I can change how I view it. You know, as we've seen before, I can view it in a tabular format or in a nice graphical format. And again, you know, when I'm done with that analysis, then I can just go back with just using my browser back button a couple of times, I can go back to the dashboard where I started that analysis. We've got a sales pipeline type of, of dashboard here. Again, it's all live. Notice I won't keep drilling through, but notice that if I hover over different areas of this dashboard, I could drill in to these different measures or objectives here. Uh, we've got a key measure history dashboard combining both speedometers and some various types of graphs. You know, we've got a nice effects of IT initiatives dashboard here. This is a great one. This is one of my favorites because it brings together on one page some views of how you're performing against measures that are down here represented as gauge widgets along the bottom, as well as an overall objective on the left. And it brings it together on the same page with visualizations of how you're performing on initiatives that are intended to drive improvement of performance of the measures that you're tracking along the bottom. So this is the dashboard. Something like this is what I'm gonna show you how to create uh, from scratch. And then under here, we've got uh, you know, a call center status dashboard, fairly simple and straightforward. The cool thing about this one is this is an example of how you can bring uh, in, uh, visualizations that come from outside of QuickScore or, or Scoreboard. So all of the colored boxes along the bottom giving me an indication of our performance, again, with very intuitive red, yellow, green, you know, color coding. That's, that's coming, of course, from, from QuickScore and from the, the database and the repository underneath. But this map on the top is coming from, of course, outside of QuickScore, and you can leverage it via one of our dashboard widgets. So uh, with that sort of introduction, like introduction into dashboards in hand, let's just show you an example here of how I could create something quite similar to this effects of IT initiatives dashboard. So I'll start by clicking towards the top of the black navigation pane. I'll click new dashboard. I'll give this a uh, name of training dashboard and I'll create it. So it comes to life as an empty dashboard that as of right now, all it really has is a name. And I could immediately move this, copy it, or I could delete this dashboard. I'd actually like to maximize the, the real estate that I'm working with, that I have available to work with this, this dashboard. So I'm going to click towards the right. I'm going to click full screen just to remove visibility to the name and the move and copy and delete. Um, so I've got this dashboard and the gray area is effectively your blank canvas. It comes to life with just this limited size, but trust me, they can be as big and broad as, as you want it to be. And what you do is you design your dashboard by adding widgets. Again, it's a free form blank canvas onto which you bring, again, what we call widgets. And there are 10 different types of widgets that you can add to a dashboard. I'm not going to be showing you examples of every one of these. An image is, of course, just calling a picture. Maybe it's your company logo or something. Maybe a background image that you want to be behind everything. Uh, text is very straightforward. It's just a text box allowing you to name something on the dashboard. The bubbles, charts, speedometers, linear gauges, reports, and notes and timelines all tie to quick score or scoreboard applications uh, or information that comes from within QuickScore or scoreboard and the embedded, the example that I showed you of that map on the call center dashboard is an example of an embedded uh, widget that is sourced from somewhere outside of QuickScore via you know, a, web, a web reference. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just build a, a, a dashboard similar to what I showed you by adding, I'll put in a couple of speedometers in here. And what I'm going to do is build, you know, a, an effects of IT initiatives dashboard, right? So because I'm focused on IT measures, I'm going to go to the information technology organization and find in the information technology scorecard a couple of different measures. So I'd like to bring in the IT availability index. I'd like to bring in the network availability and I'd like to bring in percent problems resolved within a day. So three different measures that I want presented on this dashboard. 
And so they all exist here. And again, this is where the size of the dashboard is completely flexible. I can drag and drop widgets to go wherever I want them to go. So in this case, I'll just kind of plop network availability down towards the bottom. I'll put IT availability index next to it, and then I'll bring down percent problems resolved within a day. Please note that as I'm moving these around, these widgets around, you'll see some subtle lines will appear around these different widgets, helping you to align them visually top to bottom, middle, left, you know, help you just get everything straightened away on the same, if you will, grid. You also have, you can work with these one by one. Each and every one of these widgets, whatever type it is, has a settings uh, menu here where I can go in and work with these widgets in, again, a variety of ways. We really don't have time here today for me to cover all of the myriad properties and what they do but you have the opportunity to define specifically where something is, if you drill through, where should it go? What do you want to show on this, on this particular, in this case, speedometer widget? Uh, you know, what else do we have here? You know, what type of background should there be? How big should it be? Do you want to lock it so that no one can really move it or change it? Uh, do you want to duplicate it so that you make a copy of it? So there's lots of different things you can do widget by widget. And you can simultaneously do things to multiple widgets on the same dashboard. So in this case, I've, if you will, lassoed around all three of the speedometers because I want to make some settings changes that I want to impact all three of these. So for all of these different speedometers, I would like to see their normalized score, and I would like to see the thresholds that have been defined for these different um, speedometer gauges or, or widgets, okay? Now, in addition to showing, you know, the individual performance measures tied to some of our IT, um, you know, values, I also would like to see an overview of an objective. So how are these things doing in terms of rolling up to an objective? And I'm going to present that in a slightly different way using a different, again, visual widget, which in this case is going to be a linear gauge. And what I'm going to do is go into our mobile world balance scorecard and find this objective to improve IT effectiveness and add it. So it has now been created here as a gauge on the same dashboard. And again, I can resize this, I can you know, make it bigger, make it taller, I can position it anywhere I want it to go. So right now, this, this dashboard is very simple in nature, of course, but it's showing me measures along the bottom. All of these roll up to an objective to improve IT effectiveness, which is great. But what I would also like to do is keep all of these things on the page, but I also want to bring in a couple of graphs that tie out to some of our IT-based initiatives where we are, have set up some initiatives to hopefully drive performance improvement across the measures and, of, and across the objective that I'm showing here. So again, I'll go up to add another widget. And in this case, what I'm looking for is a chart. And in this case, I'm going to tie to an initiative. I alluded earlier today that we're, we're not going to be talking about how to create initiatives during this training session. But initiatives are great because they're, they're sort of like projects that allow you to set up goals, timelines, budgets, so that you can ideally improve performance on the measures and the objectives that you're tracking in your scorecards. So I would like to add a chart for the Migrate Servers to Cloud initiative. And while I'm here, let's also add a chart for the build a search engine optimization capability. Again, both of those being IT-related initiatives. And again, I can drag and drop these, put them wherever I want them to go. I can resize them so that they just kind of align nicely and visually. And there you go. And so all of these are being, they're all coming from different areas of the underlying scorecard or different scorecards, but they're all presented on one nice concise dashboard. And again, I can just go ahead and click save, and then I can exit full screen, and then to get out of edit mode by clicking done at the bottom here in the, at the bottom of the black navigation pane. I'll click done. And there is an example of a dashboard that I created in just a matter of a few minutes. Again, it's all you know drillable in terms of, I could take a look at network availability and see that we're doing very poorly here. But let's see if I can get some more detail about how we're trending over time. I can navigate to take a look at any of the different measures that are in here. And again, when I'm done with that analysis, I can just go back to the dashboard. And again, what's really cool about this, when you've got initiatives 
and measures and objectives on the same page, you can very easily kind of track actual performance on these initiatives. So all I'm doing here, folks, is in the upper right corner, I'm navigating forward in time throughout the year 2019. And I see that if you've just focused your attention on build and SEO capability, I see that we are, you know, progressing with that initiative, we're spending money, you know, we're achieving a certain percentage of completion over time. But what's troubling is that when I get further ahead, my performance really isn't getting a whole lot better. You know, we started that initiative back at the beginning of, of 2019, and performance back in, you know, early 2019 was kind of mediocre. Um, but as we go forward in time, it's, it's actually it seems to be almost getting worse in terms of improving our IT effectiveness, where early on, you know, we're in the green, but as I move forward ahead in time, we're actually dipping down into the yellow and even maybe even into the red when I get into July. So it does lead us to question whether this initiative to build an SEO capability is really helping. And maybe it just takes a while for that initiative to be completed. And only then will we, we reap the rewards in terms of the performance measures. But the point here is that you've got all of this on one consolidated dashboard page, bringing together, again, different elements from different scorecards, different areas of quick score. So that, in a nutshell, is um, creating a briefing. Again, as I've said before, we do have a nice training video, a little more extensive than what I've shown you here in, in five or 10 minutes about you know, creating dashboards, again, up in our learning library at uh, balancedscorecards.com or at kpi-dashboards.com if you are a scoreboard customer. Okay, um, again, just a level set here. The next, uh, and it's actually our second to last uh, topic to address here today. I'll just bring up again our agenda. Uh, we're up to creating a briefing. So let's get into creating a briefing. Um, a briefing, in a nutshell, is a, it's like a presentation deck. It is our own, if you will, quick score or scoreboard proprietary presentation offering where what you can do is put together a presentation. Again, I like to use the term deck, kind of analogous to like a, a PowerPoint deck that you can present in full screen mode. Same kind of idea here at play with our briefings. The primary difference is that, as you guys well know, something like PowerPoint is very static in nature. You can create nice, visual, engaging things, but they're, they're not tied to the underlying data that is driving the visualization. Within QuickScore or Scoreboard, briefings are constantly tied and to the underlying data repository and all of the applications that are brought together within the briefing. Um, you'll note here that this briefing that I'm showing you right now is called monthly staff meeting. And before I click into presentation mode on it, I'll just share with you that this is comprised of 12 different pages. Effectively, a page is pulling from a different application that lives somewhere else. So each of these pages is representing either a dashboard. You know, you guys have seen these dashboards I showed you to you a minute ago. But they're all pulled together into like a book or a presentation deck allowing me as a presenter to just roll page by page by page through this presentation. And the way that a briefing is really employed most effectively is in really in full screen mode. So if you look toward the far upper right, there's a start button. So I'm gonna click start to effectively start the presentation. And again, that's analogous to saying, hey, in, in PowerPoint, let's go full screen mode. So I've got a nice visual presentation of a strategy map here. I can move ahead to page two showing again a key measure history dashboard. I can go to the sales pipeline dashboard. And along the way, no matter which page I'm on, I can pause if someone, if I'm presenting this to like the, the monthly staff, at the monthly staff meeting, and someone has a question, they say, wait a minute, this sales pipeline, how is it that we're doing really well on ad clicks, leads, and new trials, and yet we're not acquiring a lot of new customers? I really would like to see some more detailed information about new customers. You can click on new customers and immediately drill in to the scorecard where that new customer's information is coming from and then do your ad hoc analysis of that, of that whether it be a measure or objective or perspective or any scorecard element. I seem to be a little bit hung here. Hopefully you guys can all appreciate that I, oops, I like all of you, am working from home here today in this era, in this wonderful world we live in of COVID-19, we're all trapped at home. And I think my home internet may not be doing a good job of supporting the navigation that I'm attempting. But um, without being able to show you that, just, just trust me, 
that I could drill into the scorecard. Also, while I'm in here, I can, of course, adjust the time period that I'm viewing. So I may say, wow, you know, July doesn't look so good. How did we do in June? I can go backwards in time and see that in June, we actually were doing worse. Come on, come to life. Again, not really changing for me. Sorry about this. Um, anyway, it's very uh, dynamic in nature. Again, it's tied live to underlying data, and you can, again, navigate page to page to page to show really whatever it is you want to show. It can be, oh, doggone it. I'm going to do a quick refresh here, folks. Pause. Give me a second here just to do a refresh on my browser to hopefully bring this all back to life. So I'll go to the monthly staff meeting again and try and get back into start mode. Uh, and I won't, I won't belabor this, but I did just want to like share with you how easy it is to navigate down into something, investigate the detailed performance, and then when you're done with that detailed, you know, train of thought analysis, you can then very easily go back to the presentation deck that, where you started. So you're able to answer someone's question, do a deep dive analysis, and then when you're done, you can just simply click resume at in the upper left-hand corner and you're brought right back to the page where you started. And again, the types of things that you can bring into a, into a briefing are any of the ubiquitous, you know, any of the different types of applications that I've shown you to create, graphs, reports. Uh, we've got a page in here, you know, that's a, a dashboard. We've got one here that's a report. So this is a basic sales report. So these different pages can look very distinctly different, but they're all brought together into one presentation, if you will, deck or, or book. And when you're done presenting, then you just click in the upper right, you click stop, and you get back into, if you will, edit mode of QuickScore. So how do you create a briefing um, in terms of, you know, teaching you how to do it? It's, it's very simple, very easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my newly created training 2020 uh, organization that you know that I, you know, I created earlier today. And presently, there is no briefing in that 2020 training 2020 organization. So I'll create a briefing. And again, I'll just call this, you know, training briefing. Keep it simple, right? And then I'll create it. So effectively what I've done, folks, I've created an empty book. It's a book with no pages but it's ready to have pages added into it. So if I wanna now populate this training briefing with other applications that I can pull from wherever within QuickScore or, or Scoreboard, I just get you know, out of the edit mode now that this training brief, brief, I said briefly, anyway, you know the idea, training briefly. Um, I'll go to something else that we've created previously. So if I go into, I'll, I'll, I'll pull things from Mobile World just because they're, they're prettier and ready to go. So I'll go to the Mobile World Inc. organization, and from Mobile World, you know, I've, I've shown you these different dashboards that exist. I'll go find one of these dashboards. Let's go into sales versus expense. If I want to put this into my briefing, all I do is go up to the far upper right corner, click send to, and the very first choice here, amongst all of the myriad other places that you can send something like a dashboard like this, the very first choice is briefing. So I'll click briefing, and then I, of course, need to just navigate and find the briefing into which I want to add that dashboard as a page. So there's my poorly named <laughs> training briefly. Uh, that is the briefing that I want, you know, this new page to be added to. So I'll click save. So that's page one. Let's say I also want sales pipeline as another dashboard in my training briefing. Again, I'll say let's go ahead and send this again, to my organization of training 2020, and I want to put it in that training briefly. And I'll click save. Let's say that I want, you know, a report within my briefing. So this red measures report that I showed you earlier, if I want this as something, a page in my briefing, I again, just navigate out, find my training briefing, and put it in there. So hopefully you get the point. I don't want to, you know, beat the dead horse on this. But uh, what I've done is populated my briefing now with three different types of applications. And again, they can be virtually anything, any kind of visual that you have, you can export or not export it, but send it to a briefing. So if I wanted an overview of my financial performance as a page in my briefing, I'll do this as the last one, a briefing, I can go in here and again, put it into the training briefing and click save. So that briefing now, if you recall, should have four pages. So what I'll do is go back to that organization, my training 2020 organization. I'll go to the briefings section, 
where I find my training briefly briefing. And you'll note here at the top, it's got four different pages. So I got sales pipeline as page two. I've got red measures report as page three. And I've got that financial scorecard view as page four. So briefings are very easy to create. You're again just you're basically creating an empty book and populating it with pages that come from wherever you want within uh, the quick score or scoreboard solution. Okay, um, so that's briefings. And folks, we are already to our last uh, agenda topic of the day, and this one's setting bookmarks. This again feels to me fairly similar to what I just did in terms of creating a briefing. The difference here in creating a bookmarks is it's very personal. That creating a briefing is intended, that briefing when, when it was created is intended certainly probably for my own personal use, but it also could be accessed by others who have you know, visibility to it and they could use it for, for their purposes. The bookmarks section, as I believe I touched on quite a bit earlier here in this presentation, the bookmarks section of QuickScore or Scoreboard is intended to be your own personal library. And again, depending on how it's set up or what you choose to put in it, it can feel kind of a lot like the briefing I just created in that in my bookmarks, I have chosen to put six different applications in here and they happen to be the same types of things that I just put into that briefing, but they certainly don't have to be, right? And so in this case, I might have, you know, show me, you know, I want to have quick and easy single click access to building a search engine optimization capability initiative. Or again, as I've shown you, I want quick and easy access to an overview of my mobile world balance scorecard. The point being here, you get to populate your bookmarks however you want. And the intent or the reason behind having bookmarks at all is simple, easy access, one click, easy access to what you care about and want to use day in and day out very quickly and easily. So how is something added to a bookmarks? It's as simple as can possibly be. I can go, let's just say that I go into a, a scorecards area and let's imagine that, you know, I, I really care about IT initiatives. And so in the IT department, I'd like to, um, you know, have quick and easy access to this IT effectiveness index without having to do the type of navigation I just did to get here. I don't want to have to remember where it is and navigate to it so that I view it. I just want this thing in my bookmarks. So I find the thing I want in my bookmarks and towards the upper right, the second button in in this five button toolbar is a star and that's the bookmarks star. So if I just click on it, notice that the bookmarks star becomes blue. That tells me immediately that this IT effectiveness index view has now been added to my bookmarks. I could go again to it, let's say another uh, IT measure that I care about, or let's, let's actually change it up and I'll go over to maybe, you know, in the operations department, I've got another measure in here that I care very much about, you know, uh, as a trainer, I of course care about the trainer utilization rate and I like to bookmark that. So I find it again and I click bookmarks. So it's now become blue. Exact same idea for anything that I've got in here. You know, I could go and find a chart or a report that exists, you know, within mobile world and I want to bookmark that. So let me just find, there's my training 2020 graph, right? That we created, I created earlier. Let's bookmark that. So if I now go to my bookmarks section, you'll see that the last three elements here or objects within my bookmarks library are that IT effectiveness index I added, the percent trainer utilization scorecard view, and that training 2020 graph. And if you wanted to remove something, let's say that in the end I say, well, I don't care so much about this IT effectiveness index. I'd like it, I'd like it gone from my library. It's kind of cluttering things up. Uh, you can just click on the blue star to remove it or delete it from your bookmark. It is, of course, not deleting the IT effectiveness measure from the scorecard where it lives. It's just removing it from your bookmarks um, section. And again, before we let the bookmarks thing go, you can also categorize or organize your bookmarks where you can create, you know, folders, you know, whatever, you know, your folder here, right? So you can organize your bookmarks however, however you'd really like, and then you can just drag and drop things into your folder, right? Or under your folder is where they go, okay? So this now, my folder here contains that training 2020 graph. And I can collapse it up just to conserve, you know, space if I wanted to. 
So that is your brief uh, introduction to bookmarks. All right, folks. Well, um, you know, I know that we scheduled this for two hours, and I hope I didn't rush through things. But we have, you know, covered all of the topics that we intended to cover with you here today in this inaugural, um, you know, training session here in this unprecedented time of spring, you know, 2020. Um, again, it would I, maybe I could pause real quickly and just take a look and see if anyone has questions that we could address. Um, but generally, we're we're pretty much done here with this session. Let me just take a quick look and see if there are any questions. I don't know if um, any of my cohorts from Spider Strategies feel like they might want to jump in and let me know if there are questions that maybe it would be appropriate for me to address right now while we have a little more time. Or we could just say, look at that. We got it done faster than we thought we would, and we appreciate your valuable time, and we'll send you on your merry way. See if we've got any questions here to view. I don't see any questions, and let me just see if there's anything here in the chat. I don't see any chat either. Okay. Well, um, again, unless any of my cohorts want to jump in and say anything, you know, jump into the audio. I guess at this point, I'll just wrap things up for this session by thanking you very much for your time and attention today. I do hope this the session was helpful. Again, if if you have any kind of feedback for me or questions that you'd like me to personally address, you can feel free to contact all of us here at Spider Strategies and our training department at Learn at spiderstrategies.com, and we will do our level best to get back to you quickly, uh, whether it be via email or, you know, if, if at all possible, maybe pick up the phone and give you a call and talk you through whatever kind of questions and help you need. And next Thursday, so I guess that's Tom, it, folks. Next Thursday, Tom, will be the uh, administration uh, continuation of this session. So if you're new to administration, of the software and you're looking for some guidance as to how to set up things like currencies and calendars and things of that nature, that will be the session that we run next Thursday. Thank you, Dee, appreciate that. Okay, folks, well, like I say, I do hope this was helpful to you. Thank you again very much for your time and attention. We very much appreciate all of you as customers here at Spider Strategies and always let us know how we can help you. With that, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. And please, everyone, have a great day and good rest of your week.